Bubble sort is a slow algorithm. It's n squared for the worst case and the average case. But the good thing is that it's very simple, both in concept and in the code. So that makes it the perfect introductory algorithm for learning purposes. Basically, we check every two adjacent items. If two items are out of order, just swap them. After one round of checking and swapping through the data, the biggest item will get pushed all the way to the back. So that means if we scan the entire data the same way for n times, all the data will be in their proper positions. So the complexity for a single scan through the data is n, and we perform n number of scans. That's n times n, which is n square. In practice, it's not always going to be exactly n times of scanning through the data. We can actually stop whenever it is around through the data without any swapping. That means the data is done sorting. And that's why in the best case, when the data is already sorted to begin with, the complexity is just n. First, create a variable for the total count of the data. We're going to need two loops. In some implementations, you might see while loops, but to keep it concise, I'll use for loops here. The external loop controls the number of scans. Technically, we're repeating it n minus 1 times instead of n times. That's why we start from 1 instead of 0. And then the internal loop is for scanning through the data to start from a second item. If the two items are out of order, that is, the current item is smaller than the item that comes before it, we then swap the two items. We'll create a swap function next. The swap function takes the data and the indexes of the two items that we want to swap. Put the first item in a temporary variable, and then put a second item in the first item's place. And finally, put the temporary item in the second item's place. Let's create some random data to test the bubble sort function. I'm using the console to run the JavaScript code with Node.js. As you can see, the data is fully sorted. As it currently is, this bubble sort will run n squared times, and it will not stop even when the data is already fully sorted. To change that, we have to use a Boolean variable to keep track of whether something has been swapped during a scan through the data. We'll set it to true every time we swap two items. After a scan, if this variable is still false, that means the data is already sorted, and we can break out of the external loop. As previously mentioned, each scan will guarantee to put the biggest item in its proper place. That means the area at the back with all the biggest items is considered sorted. The code we have so far will still scan through this sorted area to optimize the code to avoid scanning the sorted area. We need to add a few things. First, create a variable to keep track of the progress of the sorting. And every time we finish one round, we add one to the progress variable. Next. Instead of scanning all the way to the back, we only scan up to the place right before the sorted area. So the total count minus the current progress will tell us when to stop. Now the bubble sort runs a little bit faster, but it's still n square performance, because this improvement isn't enough to change its asymptotic class. For example, 2 n square and 1 and a half n square. Both of them belong to the same class, which is n square, because we dropped the constant coefficient for analyzing algorithms.